The topic of today's video will be pressure switch testing. So if you think a pressure switch is bad, I have three ways of how you can check your pressure switch or test it to see if it's bad or not. So the sequence of operation is the very first thing that happens, the thermostat calls for heating, then the inducer motor is powered on if you have an inducer motor, and next the pressure switch closes. The reason I have two pressure switches is because I have a two-stage furnace. So in my case, you know, they're even labeled one says low here, one says high for low stage and high stage. In my case, the low stage will get energized first. So the inducer motor comes on and creates an induced draft. And these pressure switches, they're the only part of the furnace that kind of works like pneumatics. The induced draft motor that's pulling a draft out your exhaust causes an air pressure difference. And through these little hoses in the back of these pressure switches, these pressure switches sense the difference in pressure and they close. They're normally open switches. When there's some pressure applied to them via these hoses, those pressure switches close and that, that allows the electrical circuit to go through and continue on its path. So if you're having some kind of a pressure switch problem, one of the first things you want to do is make sure that it's not the actual pressure switch that is the problem. So the first way you can check it is by setting your meter to the ohm symbol or to resistance. I have a whole video of how to use this meter if you need it, but you would set it to that symbol right there, ohms, and we'll be checking if that switch closes or not. Like I said earlier, this is a normally open switch, so there should not be any continuity. In fact, we can switch it to continuity so we can hear an audible beep. There should not be any continuity with the power off to the furnace and without this inducer motor running. If you have continuity going to the switch, I disconnected both of my wires from my low stage switch. If you have continuity at your switch without the inducer motor running, that means your switch is stuck closed and that's a bad switch. You can try blowing in there and sucking on it just gently to try to free it up. But a lot of the times if it's stuck like that and you manage to free it up, a lot of times it'll get stuck like that again down the road. So you might as well just replace that pressure switch. So as you can see, I have OL or open line. I have no continuity between the two terminals, which is good. So now let's power on the furnace and then just make sure that your wires are not touching anything. You can leave them hanging like that, but make sure they're not touching anything metal. I know that this one is always gonna be powered on and this one has no power. That's why one of them has the insulation and the other one doesn't, or sometimes they will both have insulation. But just to be safe, just make sure both of them are not touching anything. I like to just see them right in front of me so I know where they are. So right now, my thermostat upstairs is calling for heat. So my furnace will turn on right when I turn this power switch back on. The inducer motor will come on, and because of the pressure difference, this pressure switch will close. The pressure difference being created by the induced draft motor. So I'll put my leads on the two terminals right away. I have my meter set to continuity. So once the switch closes, you're gonna hear the meter start beeping. So let's give it a try. And there it goes. Or you can check this just with your meter uh, in the ohm symbol right there in resistance. There won't be a beep, but you'll see a resistance reading. As you can see, I have 3.4 ohms. Sorry, more like 1.2 ohms. You have to have your leads firmly in there. And if it's open, of course, it's gonna be OL. So let's turn the power back off. And just as a recap, this is a normally open switch, so you should have OL, or no continuity, with the inducer motor off. When the inducer motor comes on, this pressure switch should close and there will be continuity or resistance between these two terminals. So that's the first way you can check the pressure switch using resistance or continuity. And the second way is with voltage. So if you switch your meter over to the voltage, AC volts, let's turn our furnace back on and I will put one lead on one terminal and I'll leave the wires on this time. Uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but when you're checking resistance or continuity, you want the wires off. You want the load to be isolated, no wires connected to it. But when you're checking voltage, you want the wires to be on. 
So I'll put both leads on both terminals like that. And keep in mind that an open switch is going to have voltage. So this is low voltage. This will be 27 volts once I power up the furnace. And a closed switch is zero volts. And a closed switch is almost like just measuring a piece of wire. So if I measure voltage from here to here, if this was bare wire, there's no voltage drop there. So of course there's not going to be a voltage reading or a voltage drop reading, which is essentially what we're measuring. So once again, when the switch is open, it'll have 27 volts once I power on the furnace. And when it closes, it'll drop down to zero. So let's give it a try and see how that looks like. That's a normally operating pressure switch. But if it's at 27 volts and it stays at 27 volts after the inducer motor turns on, that means either the pressure switch is bad and it's not closing, or there's something wrong with the draft. Either something stuck in the exhaust or maybe a pressure switch port is plugged. I have a whole nother video of 10 pressure switch problems that could be causing that. So anyway, back to the test. Let's turn the power on. This should go up to 27 volts when there's a call for heat. There it is. My inducer motor turned on and right there, it dropped to zero. Doesn't take very long. And then of course my igniter will go on, my burners will light, then the blower fan will come on, and the furnace will continue with its heating cycle. So that was method number two to test the pressure switch using voltage. And for the third method, the third method is a little bit more advanced. You would need a manometer. Most people wouldn't have this that can check inches of water column, but every single service technician should have one of these. And using a manometer, you would need some pressure switch tubing, some hoses that are similar to what you have hooked up to your pressure switches. I pulled these off from old furnaces that were condemned in the past. Or you can just order them online on Amazon. They come in little spools. And you will also need a barbed T-fitting, either brass or plastic, with 3 16 um, holes on all ends right here, on all three ends. And basically what you will be doing is putting your manometer in series with the pressure switch to see what kind of a pressure difference we're getting. So using this little plastic T-fitting or brass, whatever you have, put one little piece of hose on one side, the long one on the other side, it doesn't have to be long, just whatever length you can find. On one side, I did mine long so I can stick my manometer out so you can see what's going on. And then what I'm going to do is just unplug the little hose from the pressure switch. And instead of this hose, I'll plug this T-fitting in to the one that I just unplugged. So it looks like that. And then instead of this one, I will plug in the other end into that pressure switch port. Like that. Make sure none of your tubing is kinked. Otherwise you won't get a good read. So now that that's set up, I can turn on my manometer. If your manometer reads more than just inches of water column, make sure that you're on the right scale because there's different options. Make sure that you're on WG or inches of water column. And then plug your last hose into the manometer. And then on the pressure switch right here, on my low stage, it says 0.17. All of them will have a rating some kind of a sticker either printed on it or on a sticker what the pressure switch will close at it says right here 17 inches wc water column or pf it'll say for the high stage it's 0 0.50 so the inducer motor actually ramps up and draws more of a pressure difference than this switch closes but we're only going to be doing this one in this video this one's rated at 0.17 so in order for this switch to close, the inducer motor must be pulling at least a 0.17 inches of pressure difference. So we have everything hooked up and ready. 
our manometer is in series with the pressure switch. And let's turn our furnace on and see what kind of read we get. And as you saw, it ramped up to like 0.7 right off the bat. That's because on most two-stage furnaces like mine, the inducer motor will briefly start at the high stage and then it ramps down to the low stage. So just give it a couple seconds to even out. And as you can see, my inducer is pulling a 0 0.4, 0 0.45 about. And this pressure switch closes at 0.17 inches of water column. So this is more than enough to close this pressure switch. Checking the pressure switch with a manometer is really the best method of checking the pressure switch. Cause you know, if it's rated at 0.17 and you're getting like a 0.3 and it's not closing, then you know that something's wrong with that pressure switch. But if the reading on your manometer is reading lower than what the pressure switch is rated at, then you know that there's actually a problem with your draft or with the exhaust. Or if you have a high efficiency furnace, it could be a problem with the intake as well. So using a manometer is a surefire way to find out if the pressure switch is bad or if you're not getting an adequate draft. So maybe there's something plugging the exhaust or if you have a high efficiency furnace, maybe something's plugging up the intake, something's wrong with your heat exchanger, etc, etc. I have a video of pressure switch problems that you can refer to for more ideas of what else could be going wrong. Well guys, I hope you found this video useful. That was a lot of info crammed into a little bit of time. If you're an HVAC tech watching this and you notice that I missed some stuff, there's a good chance that I did. Um, do let us know in the comments below if you have any further suggestions or pointers of how else you can check the pressure switch. I thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. For those of you still here, I just want to show you the inside of a pressure switch. I didn't have one at home that I could dissect but I did find one online that's a good example. So here's the pressure switch, and here's the pressure switch in two pieces. So here's what the inside would look like. That red circle all the way around, that's the diaphragm, and the membrane, which is kind of the intersection of it, is actually a very thin layer. It's all made out of silicon, and if you put too much pressure into it, that silicon will rupture. There'll be a crack or a hole in it. And that purple piece in the middle, that's the spring, it goes into that adjustment port on the other side there. And all pressure switches are actually originally adjustable, but at the factory, after they adjust them, they seal that set screw on the other side with some silicon or some kind of a glue, so you can't adjust it afterwards. And if you do tamper with it, that actually voids the warranty on the furnace. So really, factory set pressure switches are not to be adjusted. And in the next picture, the diaphragm is flipped over. On the other side, there's the stem. That stem goes into the other side of the pressure switch and there's a little micro switch in there, which is basically a set of really small contacts. When there's a pressure difference in the pressure switch, that spring will press down on the shaft and that will close the little micro switch. And on this last picture here, you can see the diaphragm and what's on either side of it. So on one side you got the spring, on the other side you got the shaft. So when the inducer motor is pulling a vacuum or a draft, that spring will press down on that shaft and that shaft will close the micro switch and allow the current to go through. So, the insides of a pressure switch are actually not that complicated. Thank you for staying till the end and we'll see you next time.